Well, yes, it is a dangerous place for journalists, and I think I would like to appreciate what Mr. Vinod Sharma, uh, his comments uh, recently, and I think he has put it very well when he has said that, if, uh, when he has noted that mm. in Pakistan we have had to fight against so many things, so many extra constitutional forces, and uh, so we really do appreciate uh, the, 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 the value of our uh, of press freedom as well, uh, as these forces are still at work trying to prevent media um, from uh, being free. Um, in terms of uh, the, the expulsion of the two Indian journalists, Meena Menon and Snehek Phillips, it's really unfortunate. And I think, as Mr. Sharma recently pointed out, that Pakistan was trying to, quote unquote, maintain parity. I think, in my view, that's a very immature position to take because I think it is in our interest and, in, and, our, and to our benefit as Pakistanis to get views from India by Pakistanis of Pakistanis in India. Hmm. So for the establishment to say that, well, uh, we don't have any journalists there, so we are not going to let your journalists stay here, I personally think that's a very mature view, and I think that's not a very statesmanlike uh, position to take. And I think that it should be reconsidered. Uh, secondly, I, I think that times have really changed since the time that uh, Mr. Sharma was talking about when the journalists were earlier uh, let to go. Um, one thing is the rise of the internet. I know most media outlets in Pakistan right now actually have uh, correspondents in India who are Indian. Yes. So they are people who are, uh, they, they are local correspondents who are Indian in India, writing, for, writing or reporting for Pakistani newspapers, TV channels, radio channels. However, that is not the same thing as having somebody go there with a different perspective who is living there as a Pakistani in India. So uh, there, there may be financial constraints, you know, so they may think, well, you know, media, media outlets all over the world are cutting down on foreign correspondents, and maybe Pakistani, we don't know why Pakistani journalists are not in India right now. I was told that uh, India wasn't giving clearance to the journalists who were nominated, but I still don't know which journalists were nominated. Nobody does. Hmm. I don't know if anybody has, uh, any media outlet has tried to send any journalists. I don't think they have, personally. I mean, I think that has just been let go. Uh, and it is unfortunate that in that, um, you know, scheme of things that uh, Meena and Snehesh were uh, sent home because they were doing some really good reporting from Pakistan. Uh, you know, which is which is to which was actually to Pakistan's benefit because both of these journalists are very uh, seasoned journalists. They are open-minded journalists. I, they are not bigoted. They are not quote-unquote hyper-nationalist or anything like that. And having them in Pakistan was of benefit to Pakistan. So I think Pakistan really should consider, and I think Pakistani media should really make a right. push to send journalists in. Well, I think that it's a, a part of a process. Mm -hmm. I think we have to weigh what's going on, and yes, you are right, in this case, and in Nina and Senator's case, absolutely mm. looks like behind the scenes it's the military or the security establishment pulling the strings mm. and uh, saying that they should not be there, and similarly with Jackson Wall. Now, you have to remember, um, I think with Meena, she had written something about the Balochistan issue and so had Declan Walsh. Right. And that is the uh, sticking point at this uh, uh, right now. Yes. That is, it is after that, uh, after his stand on Balochistan that Hamid Mir was attacked. Yes. So uh, it's a very sore point for the Pakistani security establishment. They say that India is involved in funding and arming um, militant groups in Balochistan. And they say that this is kind of, well, you know, I, they, they don't want to say that this is what we did in Kashmir. Um, so, but, but they don't like anybody say, you know, saying anything in, about Balochistan. Right. It's a very um, sensitive area. And it's a lot of, there are a lot of grays there because there are a lot of different uh, aspects to the issue. It's not as black and white as sometimes it is made out to be. Hmm. Um, I, I think that eventually, I believe that if the political process, the democratic political process is allowed to continue, I think eventually the military security establishment will come, uh, will start uh, following policy directives of the elected civilian government. But you have to remember that it takes a long time for that, uh, for those changes to take place. It is like, you know, if a, a train is going full speed at a certain direction um, and somebody pulls the chain, um, then, you know, it takes a while for it to come to a stop and change direction. I think right. that is the same case with Pakistan. The train has been full. The, uh, uh, the train is uh, slowly and slowly coming to a halt and it will make a U-turn. It will make a turn, but it will take time. And in the meantime, 
uh, we have to remain, uh, you know, keep up the pressure to support the elected civilian government and to uh, support uh, media freedom and to support freedom of expression uh, right. in all of those. Uh, um, well, I think I would just uh, reiterate what some uh, other people have already said, that journalists need to keep on interacting and reporting honestly uh, above and beyond religious or national or uh, you know, sectarian considerations. Right. Uh, and we have to keep raising a voice for each other and for each other's freedoms, whether it is Pakistanis in, uh, right. you know, getting Pakistani journalists in India or getting in Indian journalists in Pakistan. Great, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Bina ma'am, for your uh, comments.